Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today in this box right here I have the GEP RC Phantom HD Edition, which is compatible with the DJI uh, HD goggles and controller. We're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. I wanna just plug something real quick. If you haven't already heard about SpinUp, uh, SpinUp 2020 is the event of the season. It's gonna be in September. It's coming up pretty quickly. And if you want to go check it out, go to spinup2020.com. You can register to win a lot of prizes, including a lot of DJI drones and such. And then finally, if you are a YouTuber and you're trying to expand your YouTube horizons and grow your channel, I did an entire class on Udemy, three hours long, that explains how I built Ready, Set, Drone and the things I wish I had done better from the beginning. So uh, go check that out. I'll put a link in the description for that Udemy class. And it's uh, really, if you're trying to grow on YouTube, it's a great way to get started. So let's dive into the GEP RC Phantom uh, FPV drone. Now, not to be confused with the DJI Phantom drone, this little guy is what they call, I believe, a toothpick drone. It's very, very thin arms, very lightweight. Um, and you can see stuffed right in there is a, I think it's the Cadex Vista version that, of the digital FPV system that allows it to transmit over a digital signal to the DJI goggles and get amazingly clear FPV footage as you're flying. Okay, so first of all, you'll note on this drone there are actually two ports. There is a USB-C connector right here. That is for this digital system that you're gonna have to register. There is also a USB, a micro USB port right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's kind of here at an angle. It is easy to get to, which is nice. But that is what you're gonna to do to set this drone up in beta flight and do all the configuration. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and get the, um, the transmitter here registered with DJI so that we can activate it. Then we'll set up the drone in beta flight. Okay, so what you wanna do for this is download DJI Assistant. And DJI Assistant is a program you can use and it allows you to um, do a lot of things with different DJI products, including the FPV system. You have to be running the DJI FPV series assistant too in order for this to work. So now I am. So I come in, I'm going to confirm that I'm good with that updating the firmware. And now it's updating the firmware between the um, between DJI and the unit that's in there. Okay, so that took a little while. And again, make sure you're using the FPV series DJI Assistant, but it's all updated and uh, connected. So one other thing is with DJI, if you have a DJI product, um, you have to have an account with them. So I'm logged into my DJI account. So it's associating this piece of hardware with me as the owner. So, uh, so yeah, all good there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you can see that I'm current on the latest version, version 1.00.0600. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect the drone. I'm gonna unplug it. One other thing to keep in mind, it gets really, really hot. So you want to actually, if you can, set something to ventilate air across it while you're doing this, that's a really good thing. But this is now, um, registered to me and ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the same thing with the remote control. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up real quick. Try to make this fast. So FPV remote control. Now again, this already has a receiver. That, that is the receiver that talks to this. So all I need to do is bind this guy. But before I bind this, I will need to plug it in and here it is, if you haven't seen it before, it's a pretty cool remote. I will go ahead and uh, plug in the USB-C connector once again, down here on the bottom, and plug it in here. And then uh, I will turn this on. And I'm waiting for it to show up over here. All right, there it is, DJI FPV remote. So I will go ahead and click on that, say activate device, start activation, my email address, confirm your account. I have read and agreed to the terms, disclaimer, confirm. So now I'm activating this. All right, so that is activated. 
and I'm going to skip the survey right now. Now let's see what version of firmware this is on. So again, this needs to be updated to 1.6, basically. Um, so I'm updating it right now. Okay, so once you've finished updating the firmware on the remote control, you'll get a finished uh, notification. You can go ahead and turn it off and unplug it. And then you're gonna to wanna to keep your USB-C cable handy for the goggles themselves. So I'll put the remote over here and I will open up the goggles. This is my second pair. And I'm very excited because this will allow me to do have people do ride-alongs with them. So there they are. There's the little bag that comes with it. Uh, and the this is the head strap actually that I'm undoing right now. So head strap bag that they go in set those over here for a second. Lots of books and instructions. The two of the antennas, two more of the antennas, and the, oh, there's a USB-C cable right there, which I have now, I don't need. And then this is the power cable that works with any 4S XT60 connector. So a 4S battery with an XT60. The drone takes an XT30. I'll just show you the difference real quick. This is an XT60 here in my right hand. This is an XT30 in my left hand. This is what the GEP RC uh, Phantom takes. This is what the goggles will take. I do like the fact that this cable is long enough so this can actually go in your pocket and be connected up here. So you can have the battery in your pocket with the goggles connected. And so we'll go ahead and plug this into this 4S uh, Tattoo uh, 1300 milliamp battery. Plug this into the goggles. First time they've been plugged in. Okay, so these are powered on with the battery, and I will go ahead and plug this in right here to the USB-C slot. There we go. All right, now it says DJI FPV goggles. I'll go ahead and click over here and say start activation, confirm, terms, agreed, terms, agreed, and now it's activating. Activation successful, complete. And then what I'll probably have to do is um, update the firmware to the same version as the others. So yes, it's, it's not on the latest firmware. So doing that firmware update right now. Now, the good thing is the, the air unit, which is in here, the goggles and the remote will all be on the same firmware, which means they will work seamlessly together. Okay, so it's finished updating the goggles. They are on the current firmware and they are activated. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug them from my computer and I'm going to uh, unplug them from here for the moment. So the next thing we have to do is go ahead and bind the uh, quad with the controller. Um, and you have to do this in the right order or else you run into problems. I believe the order is the goggles first and then the remote second. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we will uh, go ahead and plug in the quad while holding down the bind button on it. The bind button on the quad is right over here next to the USB-C port. So you can actually push this one with your finger, which is kind of unusual on a quad like this. But I will, I don't even think you have to hold it while you turn it on, I don't think. But you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna hold it down and plug it in while I'm holding it down so that it goes into bind mode. So. Okay, so I will go ahead and t plug the uh, goggles in. I don't have antennas on the goggles right now, but we're close enough that it shouldn't really matter. The bind button on the goggles is right here by the power. So you wanna just hold this down. Oh, there we go. Now it's beeping, we're in bind mode. And Make sure this one is in bind mode. It usually doesn't take very long, so perhaps. Okay, now these two are bound, and if I remove the lens cap from there, I don't know if you can see in there, but we have the image of the camera. Yeah, we can't see that. You can't see it? Can you even tell there's something in there though? Mm -hmm. These are really cool too because the channel number that you're on appears on the side. So right now we're adjusted to channel eight, 
but um, yeah, these two are bound. So now that these two are bound, I'm gonna go ahead and bind the remote control. So we'll unplug this, set it aside for a minute. Um, I'll unplug this just for a second so it doesn't get too hot while we're sitting here. I'll bring the remote over here. And for the remote, there is a sequence you have to push. And I believe it is video here and here all at once to put it into bind mode. We'll find out in a second. So, so we'll turn the remote on. Give it a second to boot up. And then we'll hit record this button here and this button all at once. Yep, we're in bind mode. We'll plug the quad back in. We will push the bind button on the quad, which is on this side, which I can just do with my thumb before it gets too hot. And now we should be bound. So I should be able to, yep. So you can tell it's talking, they're talking to each other because when I switch these things, oh, yep, there we go. All right, so we have bound the quad to here. We are to the final step now. So we'll go ahead and uh, leave this on and leave the quad, well, we'll unplug the quad for a second and we can go ahead and control, we can go ahead and close DJI Assistant. Okay, so now we're gonna open up uh, Beta Flight. So Beta Flight Configurator. So that is opening over here. Betaflight is a free application. It's basically just a plugin for um, Chrome as I understand it, but it is right here. And what we're gonna do is this time, we're gonna plug the quad in using a different cable. So it had the USB-C that we connected to uh, activate it. Now we're gonna connect it to this little micro USB over here, which is on the the back left side of the ship. So we'll plug in here, and then we will plug the quad back in here. And we should, when we hit connect, see it here. And yep, there it is, it's connected. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to look and make sure that our receiver is truly set up the way we want it. So our throttle, yep, our throttle is good to go. Our roll is good to go. Our pitch is good to go, and our yaw is good to go. Left, right, okay. So that's all good. Now what I wanna do is I wanna configure the switches so that they match my other quads because I'm used to one way of doing this. So I'm gonna go into the modes tab here, and I'm gonna go to the arm disarm, and I'm going to make that um, this bottom right switch because this is the one I use on all my others. All right, so currently this is, this is my arm switch. So I think that's aux four. Let's see. Yeah, so this switch down here is aux four. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, have it set for arm. Uh, so basically I want it to be armed in the up position and disarmed in the down position. So I'm gonna slide this over here to here um, because it is up. So if, when it's up, it's in this yellow range now, if it's down or down, it's disarmed, which means that the motors will stop. So that should be my arm position, disarm position. And then I want to set my angle and my horizon. Uh, I want to use this switch for those. So this must be maybe aux one. Let's try aux one. So you just have to play around until you figure out which switch is which. All right, yeah, so this is aux one. So basically what I want to do is I want to say for uh, angle mode, which is your easiest flight mode, I'm going to be all the way forward, so it's in the range for angle. Then in the middle, it's a three-way switch, it's going to be in horizon. And then all the way up, it's going to be in acro, which just means it's not in angle or horizon. So by default, it's in acro when it's not in either of the others. So that's good to go. And then finally, I want to make sure the beeper is good to go. Um, beeper is this one here. I'm fine with that. That's, that's good for me. That's cool right there. So I'll go ahead and turn on turtle mode, which is going to be flip over after crash. So I'll say add range. This is aux two. So I'll say forward will be off. And then if I flip it all the way up, 
I'll be in flip over after crash. So that's all good. I'm gonna save it. All right, it's been saved. But that's your basic setup right there. So now what I should be able to do is disconnect this guy and I should be able to unplug it from here. It's gonna be a little warm. And if I flip up this switch, it should arm the motors. There you go. And it should have the beeper here, right there. This is turtle mode, which you won't be able to see anything. And then this is gonna be switching between uh, angle, horizon, and acro. All of that said, I should be ready to go fly now. Okay, so I was planning to actually make that the first part of my review video, but I figured it's better to just make it just a setup video. So that is basically how you set up pretty much any drone that has the DJI digital system built into it using the goggles and the controller. It allows you to activate these, bind them together, and then go into beta flight and actually turn the, um, turn the drone uh, set it up the way you want to set it up, the real basic stuff. Hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to now do a full review of the Phantom from GEPRC, but that's going to be a different video where we go out and fly it and such. But I had to get it set up, so I figured I'd bring you guys along for that. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I will try to get back to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.